In this video, we'll be doing about Pollard's P-1 method for factorization. And for this, let us recall quickly the basic setup of the RSA system in the public proof system. Here in the RSA, we require an integer n, which is the product of two large prime. And P and Q, these are large prime. So often we do not know, we do not make the public P and Q, but we keep n as public. So this is the question how to factor n and this problem is not easy to do the factorization that is why factorization problem itself is a very important and it plays an important role in the cryptographic now here i just want to recall fermat's theorem as well so in the fermat's theorem we can see that if we choose a number a whose g3 with p is equal to 1 then a raised to power p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p and now this method, Pollard's P minus 1 method, we also call sometimes this as Monte Carlo method. So that's the another name, Monte Carlo method. We work for, we work for this P minus 1, which is coming in the exponent. Okay. So suppose that by some means, so suppose P minus 1 is a factor of M. This is a factor of m and m is any integer. So we at this moment, I'm just choosing that let us consider any integer m and say we know that p minus 1 is a factor of m. In this circumstances, I can write m as p minus 1 times k because m is larger and p minus 1 is a factor of m. So m can appear p minus 1 into some integer k where of course k also belong to some integer. So with a raised to power m, a is same integer whose g3 with p is equal to 1 and in this circumstances we can say we want to factor uh, this capit this integer n that i have considered here and i'm considering a whose gcd with n is equal to 1 so you can consider a with gcd n equal to 1 basically this comes from the same setup uh, which we have taken in the fermat theorem as well so a raised to power m is same as a raised to power p minus 1 times k so that comes from here and we know that a raised per p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p where p is the prime so p is the prime so considering that if we are working for this particular prime and we know somehow that p minus 1 this is a factor of m we also see that a raised to power m is congruent to 1 so from this we get that p divides a raised to power m minus 1 so here we got a raised to power m uh, as minus 1 and we also know that p divides this n because n is appearing as p into q. So from here we can say that the gcd of a raised to power m minus 1 and n this include a factor p. So now this is the whole uh, idea as we can see that p divides this quantity as uh, p divides this integer a raised to power m minus 1 and p also divide n. So we say that the GCD a raised to power m minus 1 comma n this includes this factor p and so we can say that let's say if the GCD of a raised to power m minus 1 and n since this is prime so we'll consider this as the p or we may say that whenever the GCD of a raised to power m minus 1 comma n this is not equal to 1 or the n itself this is small n or n itself so these are the two trivial options so if we exclude the trivial options the non-trivial GCD. So this will give us a non-trivial GCD, which is not 1 and n. So if this is the non-trivial GCD, then this non-trivial GCD is coming as a factor of n. In fact, this is very much aligned with what I've done in the generalized Fermat theorem or while factoring the pseudo prime. So you can refer my previous video on generalized Fermat's factorization and factoring pseudo prime. So now the question remains how to find this m. So if we know that there exists some m something like this, then our this process that we have done, this makes sense. And if we can find that the GCD is a non-trivial, this will act as a common factor which will uh, work as a factor for this n and we can find the factorization corresponding to this integer n. And this is what we were trying to factor. So for the Pollard's p minus 1 algorithm, our question is to factor n. And for this, we choose an integer a, choose an integer a 
such that its GCD with n is equal to 1 or we may say that this is relatively prime. So first thing that we evaluate, we evaluate is a raised to power b factorial for certain large values b varying from 1, 2, 3 and so on and up to certain uh, limit, uh, of course certain practical limit because we can make an algorithm corresponding to that which will allow us to find a non-trivial factor. If it is a prime, then obviously we get a, a trivial factor 1 and n itself. But if it's not a prime, it will eventually give us some factor uh, from this process. And here we must always remember that we wanted to find the GCD of a raised to power m minus 1 comma n. This is the notation that I've used in my earlier case. So now I'm just keeping m to be very large. So I'm just considering b factorial. The reason that why we take that integer m as b factorial because in b factorial there are good chances that if we are checking an integer n to be a prime or uh, say if it's not prime or we want to factor this there exist factors so n minus 1 is this number the large number is covered in b factorial because b factorial increases very fastly uh, rather than simply multiplying by some number so here instead of uh, exponent m we consider b factorial so this is something a raised for b factorial and now we want to take the GCD of uh, this term. So then we find GCD of a, B a to the power b factorial minus 1 with respect to mod n and the GCD of n. And if we can get a non-trivial GCD, so if we find non-trivial GCD of a b factorial minus 1 with n, then this is a factor of n. Let's take this as a question here to understand this process and I'm just taking a very small number. Suppose I want to factor 91 and as we know that 91 is not a prime so we can we should be able to uh, get some non-trivial factor for this particular question. Here I choose an integer a. Here I choose an integer 2 such that the GCD of 2 and 91, this is equal to 1. Now what I need to check, I need to take 2 to the power b factorial minus 1 GCD with 91. So it should give me a non-trivial factor. Let us take for which value of b and capital B varies 1, uh, 2, 3, so on large values. So let's see if I take b is equal to 1, this means it is uh, 2 raised to power 1 factorial, 2 raised to power 1 factorial is simply 2. So 2 minus 1 that is 1 and 91. So these are the trivial options. I mean you can exclude, you can start from a sufficient large value. When I take b is equal to 2, we get 2 to the power 2 factorial that is 4. And we can see that 4 minus 1, 91. So this, this is 3 and 91. Again the GCD is 1. Then I take b is equal to 3. So we get 2 to the power 3 factorial. And 2 to the power 3 factorial means it is 2 to the power 6 because 3 factorial is 6. So 2 to the power 6 that is 64 minus 1 and then I take 91. Now this is 63 and 91 and their GCD is 7. Now here I can use Euclidean algorithm to find the GCD. So let's see if I wanted to apply Euclidean algorithm what I get it from here. 91 is written as 63 into 1 plus 28 and then 63 is divisible by 28. So it comes as quotient is 2 and the remainder is 7. Then 28, this is 7 into 4 plus 0. So from here we can see that the GCD is 7. So 7 is a non-trivial factor. It is not 1 and it is not uh, 91. So 7 is a factor of 91. Once we got one factor, we can find the other factor simply by dividing. So we can say 91 is 7 into 13. So that is the factorization for 91. Let us take one more question here. I want to factor 1403. And in this case, again, I choose an integer a, uh, which is 2, such that the GCD of 2 and 1403, this is equal to 1. So let's start again finding 2 to the power b factorial minus 1 GCD with 1403. This is what? So we, we want actually this to be a non-trivial and for what value it comes as a non-trivial? That is a question. So we start looking 2 to the power 2 factorial which is congruent to 4 and we see that 4 minus 1, 1403. This GCD is 1. 
then we calculate 2 to the power 3 factorial which is congruent to 2 to the power 2 factorial that is same as 3 so now i'm writing into this format so that uh, even for the computation purpose so here uh, 3 factorial is expressed in terms of the previous one that is 2 to the power 2 factorial then the exponent 3 this value we can get it from the previous one 4 to the power 3 which is congruent to 64 and so we see 64 minus 1, 1403, there GCD is also 1. Now keep on increasing like this. So for 2 factorial, I'll use the previous value, 2 to the power 3 factorial into 4, which is further congruent to 64 to the power 4, which is congruent to 142. Now you might be looking why this is congruent to 142, because I'm just calculating this with respect to 1403. So here your congress plays an important role because otherwise these value uh, takes large number of digit. Now how I have reduced this. Notice that 64 raised to power 4. This is same as 64 into 64 into 64 into 64. When I multiply two times these value, I get 4096 into 4096. Now each individual 4096, this is congruent to 1290 and this is also 1290. This is congruent to this with respect to mod 1403. With respect to n that we want to factor. When I multiply this uh, together, uh, so again I got 1664100 mod 1403 and which is congruent to 142 mod 1403 because 1403 into 1186 this is 1663958 so that means this quantity is appearing as a multiple of this so the remaining uh, remainder is simply 142 so if i subtract it from 142 i get this quantity so this is the remainder that i've written earlier now i'm going to use 142 in the next expression that is uh, 2 to the power 5 factorial so here I got 2 to the power 4 factorial and then raised to power 5. 2 to the power 4 factorial we have calculated 142 then raised to power 5 with respect to mod 1403. And in the same way I get that this is 794 mod 1403. And so we see that uh, 2 to the power 5 factorial minus 1 GCD with 1403 that is 793 because i have to subtract 1 with 1403 this gcd is 61 so the moment we got that this gcd is 61 this is non-trivial so uh, we get here that the integer 1403 this is 61 into 23 so 23 again we can divide this number 60 by 61 and we can get 23 so that is how we factor 1403 now in this example, I want to factor this integer n which is Alash and we selected a which is GCD with n is equal to 1 or relatively prime with n and I have selected b as 20. So this 20 is a sufficient enough large number so that when I take b factorial, that means when I take 20 factorial, this should try to cover at least some factors corresponding to this. So this should give the digits larger than that so that if at all there is an factor p which is common to both, it should be covered in the powers of that. Now, in the same way, we have started our process with 2 to the power 1 factorial, 2 to the power 2 factorial, and then subtracting 1 and GCD with n. This all we have checked. We found that 2 to the power 20 factorial is this, 1, 4, 5, 8, 8, 7, 0, 2, 6. And when I subtract this by 1, I get this as a GCD. Now, you can see that this is a non-trivial GCD. This is not 1 or not the integer n itself. So this gives us the factorization and this is how Pollard's P-1 method works.